Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us in this session. We have our speaker, Ashish, here to talk about the topic, code review in Salesforce. If you would like to ask questions, please put it in the live Q&A section in the AirTouch, and we'll review and address it at the end of the session. And um, if you're having um, issue with audio or video, click on the, um, the audio and video uh, problem option and then you can select another stream okay um over to you ashish welcome to southeast asia dreaming thanks for joining this session in this session we will be covering code review in salesforce so uh, let's get started a brief intro about myself uh, I'm Ashish Kumar. I'm working as platform analyst in Philips. I have total nine years of experience in Salesforce ecosystem, and I have uh, five different Salesforce certification as of now. So in this session, uh, we'll be going through a uh, different process and different tools which are available right now in market uh, for code review in Salesforce. Uh, this will uh, enable attendees to know uh, about few best practices uh, uh, which uh, should be followed during code review. And at the end of uh, uh, session, I'll, I'll uh, demo one of the tools as well. So this is a quote by uh, Robert Martin, who is uh, author of uh, say, Software Craftsmanship. So uh, it is not the language that makes programs appear simple. It is the programmer that make the language appear simple. So uh, this is in uh, context to the topic itself. And uh, uh, it's basically up to the programmer to uh, write the code in such a way that it is uh, easy to understand for another developer. Uh, I would like to thank all the sponsors who sponsored uh, Southeast Asia Dreaming for the first time and uh, uh, enabled us to collaborate uh, on this forum. So today's agenda, uh, I'll be going through uh, basics of the code review and uh, further I'll touch base on clean code and uh, its characteristics. Uh, then I'll, I'll move into a uh, code review, manual as well as automated. And uh, further, I'll discuss two tools which are available right now in market. And then I'll end my session with a demo. So starting off uh, with the basic, what actually is the code review? So it's it's a process where, uh, where a person or maybe a tool is analyzing the uh, code base and uh, uh, figuring out if there is any bug or any issues or security vulnerabilities there and uh, helps uh, uh, in improving the code quality. So intention behind code review is to uh, build the code base in such a way that it is easy for understand for another developer and uh, it's easy for them to further modify the code down the line when, when there's a new requirement. So why actually uh, we need code review? So uh, there are a few, few benefits uh, with that. One is uh, code readability improves. So uh, uh, it basically ensures that uh, um, code base has all the required comments and it has meaningful variable and methods names. It's properly indented. Methods are not so long. So all those things uh, uh, it ensures. Further, it also ensures that there's consistent, consistency among the code base. So for uh, all the different classes which are there within an application, it is built as per agreed guidelines and uh, it's not going away from those uh, uh, best practices. Code reusability. So uh, it ensures that we are not uh, duplicating the code and um, we, we constantly refactor the uh, code base to ensure that there's no duplication. For example, if uh, we, are, we are creating um, uh, uh, test records within test classes, so we need to ensure that we, we are not uh, creating it multiple times for each class, rather than we, we should be reusing that particular logic in different classes. Code review also improves the performance of the application 
considering that it uh, basically uh, works on the quality uh, of the code. So it, it will definitely improve the uh, overall performance of the application. And coming to time and cost saving. So uh, during the initial phase of the project, definitely it, it is considered as an additional task since it is consuming time as well as uh, consuming budget. But uh, in terms of long term, it's very beneficial since it helps in uh, improving the code quality. And uh, further down the line, uh, it helps the developers to uh, complete this task with, within, uh, within less number of time. So what actually is a clean code? Well, we, we are talking about clean code. So uh, anything which is easy to understand and anything which is easy to modify and change as per the new requirement. So uh, easy to understand in terms of roles and responsibilities of uh, each method and uh, classes, as well as in terms of uh, what actually uh, that method is doing, what are the global variables, local variables, so it should be uh, easy to understand the complete application from end-to-end -end perspective. And uh, in terms of easy to change, so um, anything which is small and any method or class which has single responsibility, so that will definitely be easy to change. And code should be uh, easily testable and it should have unit tests so that uh, further um, uh, it, it could be tested when, when the new code is added. To that particular class. So coming to characteristics of uh, clean code. So one, first of them is uh, it should be simple and clear. Uh, it should be easily understandable for any developer and it should not be uh, very complex, uh, not in terms of algo or system design, but in terms of, uh, 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 in terms of achieving the uh, desired uh, acceptance criteria. So uh, meaningful names. So definitely that is one uh, very helpful uh, character where uh, it gives the idea to developer what exactly the uh, particular variable or uh, particular method is doing within, within the class. Comments. So um, uh, definitely um, comments is required wherever there is a complex logic to make uh, any other developer understand so it genuinely saves a lot of time for uh, any other developer um, to understand the logic. Refactored code. So that is something which keeps on going uh, with, with the enhancement of the software application. It starts from day one and um, it need to be uh, there till, uh, till any time when we are enhancing any code. So it, 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 it basically helps the code base uh, uh, to be up to date, yeah, and uh, tested code. So anything which uh, which which we are adding within the um, application, any any code logic that has to be tested, and if there is any um, automation for testing, that also has to be modified. Dry principle. So dry principle refer to uh, don't repeat yourself. Uh, basically, ensuring that there is no duplication for uh, for the logic within the application. And um, it, it's 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 efficient and uh, the uh, the application is performing well on that side. So coming to solid principle, so uh, it has five different principle uh, like uh, um, open closed uh, uh, principle where uh, a class uh, will be open for extension but uh, closed for modification. Also, uh, it should be having only single responsibility. Um, uh, there shouldn't be multiple um, lines of code and uh, uh, it should not be doing multiple things. Uh, also, high level module should not be dependent on uh, low level modules as per dependency inversion uh, principle. Yeah. And uh, coming to Apex enterprise pattern. So uh, it has three, three patterns within it, service, domain, and uh, selector. So selector is basically to uh, have all the queries segregated for a particular S object, while domain is to execute all the uh, business logic for a particular S object. So it basically um, separates the uh, uh, entities uh, in terms of uh, software and business logic as well as uh, service layer. So it helps in uh, 
further uh, maintaining the application in longer run. Yeah, so coming to code review. So uh, code review can be done manually or it can be automated as well. But few few things will always has to be done uh, manually. So uh, one of the basic things of code review uh, which has to be done manually is to ensure that um, you are covering all the scenarios for for a user story and uh, uh, ensuring that all the test class uh, coverage is there for those uh, new code logic which has been added. Uh, yeah, and um, further, uh, there are multiple patterns within uh, Salesforce application. Uh, uh, one is trigger framework where we ensure that there is only one trigger per object and uh, all the code logic for all the events for trigger are added in trigger handler. Further, we also have integration pattern which ensures that uh, we are following a uh, correct pattern. So um, if there is a request and reply or fire and forget or uh, if uh, no code uh, integration, so. Uh, we have different options and we we can uh, go for any of them depending on the uh, requirement then we have a test data framework which uh, basically ensure that uh, we are creating a test data in uh, data factory rather than um, each each test class and we, we can also use uh, see all data to ensure that uh, uh, sorry we can also use a setup method to ensure that we are creating the uh, test record uh, according to our uh, requirement. There are multiple best practices which which are there for Salesforce application. One of the uh, them being uh, bulkification, where uh, which is the basic requirement when we are uh, writing any Apex code to ensure that it it will execute multiple records rather than single record. And we do have governor limits, which also has to be reviewed. Um, to ensure that we are not hitting any of the limits like heap size or uh, email sending limits or call outs. Yeah. And uh, further we have uh, design principles. So uh, we already discussed on the, that part where we have solid principle, Apex enterprise pattern and uh, dry principle. Okay, so uh, we, we have a multiple approach uh, uh, to perform code review, uh, such as over the shoulder or email pass around or pair programming. So over the shoulder is something where a reviewer and author both uh, sit together and reviewer is reviewing the code and uh, giving the comments to uh, author at that time itself. Email pass around is something where communication is happening on email there are multiple uh, tools right now which uh, basically generates email and whenever there is a pull request raised and uh, it will contain all the uh, assessment for the code logic and on the basis of that reviewer will uh, pro provide the comments to uh, author then we have uh, pair programming where both author and reviewer sits together uh, during the uh, writing of code itself so while, while the author is writing the code, reviewer will give the uh, uh, comments at that time itself and author will implement that particular uh, uh, comments uh, during the uh, coding cycle itself. Yeah, so coming to static code analysis, which has to be done uh, by tool and it has to be automated. So there are multiple uh, things which we can achieve uh, uh, from static code analysis, a uh, few ba basic things being DML within uh, loops or SOCWL SOSL within loops. So uh, all uh, whenever these are uh, uh, added within loops, so the static tool will basically generate warning or error. Uh, similarly, we, we can achieve security vulnerability issues uh, like uh, XSS or SOCWL injection. Uh, it will also analyze the test classes where it will it can check assert statements or system dot run as and uh, test dot start test and uh, test dot stop test. It can also uh, analyze whether C all data is enabled within the test class or not. Further, it works on coding standard as well, ensuring that naming convention is being followed for uh, class name, variable name, 
uh, proper comments are added for 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 the uh, code logic. It uh, also uh, checks on unclean code like uh, the commented out code which is there within class or debug statements or uh, unused variables or uh, or uh, methods. And uh, further, uh, it also uh, have uh, 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 functionality to check on uh, future methods and batch classes which are getting called from uh, loops in order to ensure that uh, uh, code logic is not hitting the governor limits. Uh, and also as part of coding standard, uh, it checks on hard coding values within class, ensuring that uh, there's no hard coded values, uh, which which definitely uh, can can be uh, bypassed during uh, pull request approval. Yeah. So coming to a few uh, tools which are available in market, one of them being PMD, which was one of the earlier earliest uh, tools which was available and few of the benefits related to that is uh, it is open source and doesn't need any licensing cost and it can be easily uh, used with uh, vs code as a, a plugin it, it within that uh, already there are multiple built-in rules but uh, we can create uh, rules of our own depending on project requirement and it's basically most effective when we are using during initial uh, development cycle, so that we are able to, we we are able to figure out uh, the issues related to code logic rather than figuring out at the later phase. One of the uh, major limitation is that uh, it doesn't have a, a feature to review Lightning and LWC components, and it doesn't have uh, uh, it doesn't have feature where it can run. Uh, issues um, for uh, for uh, for a complete org yeah another tool which is available is sonar cube so it it has uh, um, free license in terms of community edition but uh, for developer and enterprise edition it's uh, quite costly uh, it filters out um, issues in terms of different categories like bugs vulnerabilities uh, security hotspots and it basically gives the uh, priority according to that. One can easily perform reporting on uh, issues within within the portal, uh, SonarQ portal. And one can also access uh, uh, web, web uh, browser format of this tool. Uh, one doesn't need to install the uh, desktop version uh, to access this. And it, it can be easily integrated with the CI CD flow uh, within within the project, one of the other limitation apart from uh, uh, licensing cost is uh, is uh, time taken to configure and uh, doing the setup related to profiles and users. Yeah, uh, Salesforce CLI scanner that is another tool which uh, uh, which has been uh, uh, developed by Salesforce itself and. Uh, it is also open source and doesn't need any licensing cost. And uh, uh, one need to install Salesforce CLI in machine to use it within VS Code. Uh, you can uh, run analysis on all the different components like Apex, Visual Force, LWC, JavaScript, because this uh, tool is based on PMD and ESLA. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, as uh, this also has uh, built-in rules, but one can definitely create their own rules as per their uh, requirement. One of the limitation is uh, it it needs uh, it doesn't have feature of direct reporting within uh, the tool, and one need to extract all the issues into Excel and then perform analysis. Okay, so uh, I'll just go for a demo now. So uh, first thing is uh, we need to install uh, uh, Salesforce CLI uh, scanner uh, within VS Code. So I've already done for uh, my machine, but uh, what we can do is uh, we can use this command, Salesforce plugins, install at the rate Salesforce 
slash sfdx scanner. So this will basically install uh, the Salesforce CLI app, uh, CLI uh, uh, plugin within uh, VS Code. And in order to check if you already have this or not, uh, you can uh, use this command sfdx plugins. So this will give uh, uh, the version for Salesforce CLI as well as for um, Salesforce CLI scanner. Yeah, so uh, it shows it's uh, 2.12.0. Uh, next thing what we can do is we can check the help section of uh, SFDS uh, scanner. So SFDS scanner help. So this will give you all the commands which are there within scanner. So basically there are two major commands uh, rule where you can view or add the rules and run where you can run the um, all the rules against a code base, whether file or complete package. So uh, let's run uh, help command on uh, scanner rule. So this will give idea on the uh, rule site. Yeah, right. So th there are multiple uh, 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 rules, we, 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 multiple commands related to rules like add, describe, list, and remove. And uh, in order to see the help for uh, run, mm, we can use uh, we can use the command for run. So within this, uh, uh, as uh, you can see, uh, we have uh, multiple uh, options uh, for commands like C is uh, your category, which is nothing but different categories of issues uh, like design, best practices, code style, or security. Uh, then format is something which uh, uh, in which in which format you will get output like CSV or table or XML. Uh, further out file out file is uh, is the file where all all your uh, output will be generated for the scanner then we have uh, target target is something where, which you want which particular code base you want uh, to scan violation is something which uh, you can use in ci cd uh, flow where you can give error or warning to further stop the flow so Let's, uh, let's do a scan for uh, one of the files and see the output. So T is our target in this case. So we can use, uh, we can use complete package path over there. Then we can give uh, out file. We can give out file as scan one dot uh, csv, and then we can give uh, mm, yeah. We need to give format as well, so we'll give uh, this as csv. So it will take some time. Uh, what this will do is, uh, is it will create a file over here, a scan onecsv and it will contain all the issues uh, uh, related to this complete uh, package. Yeah, you can see the uh, status over here and scan onecsv got generated. So, uh, This basically contains all the details like uh, which class, what line number, and what is the issue. Um, this is the this is uh, the category basically, Apex stock or uh, uh, unused variable. So this these are the different issues which are coming within this complete package, and this is the category which I was talking about like design or best practices or it could be uh, documentation. So let's do one thing, let's uh, filter out on basis of uh, one category. So we'll filter on basis of code style.
and they should update this particular document with the uh, with issues related to code category so as you can see there are a couple of issues now uh, related to uh, code style and it is coming on product detail wrapper test so let's go to this particular uh, class product detail wrapper test and so this this is the place where it is showing the issue uh, it is uh, telling uh, method name does not match so over here uh, method name should be following camel case but over here it is uh, capital letters so what we can do is uh, we can uh, we can modify the name of uh, these methods to camel case and we can run the scanner again so this should uh, not be showing any issues now yeah right so there's no rule violation now uh, so the uh, basically uh, all the issues are gone because we updated the class so uh, since this will be tedious to run again and again from terminal, uh, there's another uh, easy way to uh, run this. We can create a task.json uh, file within VS code directory. And uh, we can give the detail like scanner run. Uh, this will be the command which uh, we are running. And uh, target, it will automatically pick on the basis of relative file path. And code style is something which uh, it, uh, uh, which is the category we can use or uh, we can uh, avoid this. So, yeah, that was uh, the demo. And yeah, yeah and I think I'm uh, done with my session now. Uh, we can close. Okay. Thank you, Ashish, for, for the presentation. Yep. Um, Code review is certainly a very important topic in the system development. So um, I think we have a number of questions uh, in uh, the Q&A section. Um, I'll just read them out and let you uh, answer it. OK. Yeah, sure. So sure, uh, all right. Okay. Uh, the first question is, uh, which tool do you recommend for code review? So, uh, so there are multiple mm -hmm. tools uh, right now uh, in market so um, uh, it depends on uh, uh, project what what kind of uh, project it is uh, what scale of a project it is and what is the budget so there are multiple uh, open source tools as well uh, like pmd but there are a few limitations with pmd so if uh, if uh, if there's uh, less budget on the project i think uh, salesforce cli scanner is the best uh, tool for uh, for performing the code review uh, or else uh, if there is budget on the project and if it is an enterprise uh, uh, level project then i think sonar cube will be a better option considering uh, they ha there are a lot of inbuilt rules within that and uh, it's quite easy to perform the analysis and it's quite easy to uh, uh, associate it with within a ci cd pipeline thank you ashish um yeah maybe just a follow up uh, to that uh, answer which tool are you using commonly for your project which tool are you using currently so currently, uh, for uh, mm. for uh, for my current project, uh, we are using Sonar Cube uh, since mm. it's it's quite a big project, and there are multiple Scrum teams uh, working on that. So uh, in in order to capitalize and uh, review the uh, code changes, so we, we are using Sonar Cube within within our current project. All right, thank you. Uh, okay. Um, so for the second question, um, for clean code, is it a good practice uh, that we should follow the framework structure or without this practice is also possible? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that, that's uh, actually a good question. So uh, it, again, it, it will depend on project. If uh, it is a small scale project, I think uh, uh, the basic principles uh, can can be bypassed. But uh, if if uh, if it is uh, enterprise level project and uh, uh, they in in future there will be a lot of enhancement and maintenance on that particular application, then definitely uh, uh, ideally a project should follow all, all the different kind of uh, principles which are out there in market. So within Salesforce, as we have Apex Enterprise pattern. So uh, using that as well, it uh, it usually helps a lot in maintaining the uh, different. Uh, code base uh, i mean segregating the code base in in different domains so that is also quite useful in terms of salesforce application and uh, there are other design patterns which which are there so uh, if we are able to implement within project that that is definitely going to help in a longer run all right thank you and let's move on to the next questions um if you are using version control systems such as uh, Git to manage the changes to metadata, creating uh, Apex classes, uh, meaning you have to make sure that classes are added to the profiles or permission sets, this could be maintenance. This could be a maintenance problem, but then you don't want to violate the solid principles. What are your thoughts on how to manage the huge number of classes? Did you get that question? Mm -hmm. it's a, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah I got it. So, yeah, uh, yeah uh, I I understand that uh, uh, by following these principles, uh, we might end up creating a lot of classes. But uh, if you see in a lot if we are not creating multiple classes so uh, our code base will be logged within a single class and uh, in in terms of uh, upgrading that code base it will be uh, very difficult to understand and further uh, for further update the code base so uh, even, even though if we are not having multiple classes we'll end up having all our code within single class so that will be a maintenance problem in 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 uh, for a, for a, a project which runs for a longer period of time so uh, definitely the ideally uh, it would be better if uh, we create more number of classes rather than uh, creating long classes so that would be uh, easy to understand for any new developer who is working on any user story and also uh, there there are no restrictions on uh, number of classes within within salesforce there's a restriction on a number of characters in uh, in code, but there's no restriction on number of classes. So I guess that should be fine. And uh, related to providing access on profile, so uh, definitely we will need to provide access uh, for classes. So that can be either done in one go from backend as well by uploading, I mean, by data upload on profile uh, from backend as well or we we can uh, do it on ui as well so uh, with ui it will be taking some more time and with backend uh, we can we can basically uh, do it within less period of time okay yep thank you ashish um okay the next question okay maybe you can take that once um we'll get the content of this video recording yes uh, we'll make the recording available after the event and it will be available for 90 days. You can just log in uh, back to the platform and view the recording. Um, okay, and um, the next question, um, is there any trail mix available on Trailhead? Uh, I guess it's a trail mix for code review. Uh, I haven't uh, checked that uh, if any trail, uh, tra uh, any module or trail mix is available within Trailhead. Though there is uh, one module related to Apex Enterprise pattern, uh, which uh, which you can check uh, related to code review or any particular tool. I guess uh, there's. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether any uh, trail mix is there. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ashish. Okay, I um, think we have answered most of, most of the questions. Um, um, I have a question uh, from, my, um, from my side. So um, what do we do with uh, the old codes that um, they're not clean? 
Do you have any strategy Absolutely. on clean up those codes? Yeah. So yeah. So in 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 any project, uh, uh, there's always a priority on delivering the pro. pro I mean, delivering mm -hmm. the uh, newer application or new features within application, and uh, there's mm -hmm. less priority on on uh, legacy code. But uh, there are different approaches in order to uh, uh, ensure that uh, we have less technical debt. So e either uh, many many for many projects uh, they follow strategy that uh, uh, twenty percent of spend time will will uh, devote to reducing the technical debt, or uh, there there is different strategy where uh, where one team member or a couple of team members within a scrum team. Uh, would devote their time in order to reduce the technical debt, and uh, uh, it will be dec decided that uh, there will be uh, there will be creation of non-functional user stories where uh, team can focus their energy on uh, on technical side rather than uh, working on uh, working on uh, new features of uh, application. So there are uh, multiple ways which uh, right now uh, many teams and many projects are following in order to reduce the uh, issues with the legacy code but uh, yeah that is uh, um, i guess problem with every uh, project yeah very true yeah thank you and maybe and have the last question so if you have a very lean team how can you uh, make sure that uh, you have the resource uh, to perform like a maybe a, a review of all the codes of all the developers mm -hmm. yeah got mm -hmm. it so yeah. um, uh, when whenever there's a, a resource crunch i guess uh, uh, mm -hmm. it's always better to uh, automate whatever uh, can be automated so right now uh, there are multiple mm -hmm. tools right now in market uh, which which can be suitable mm -hmm. for uh, any particular project not depending on the requirement of project so uh, with code review uh, uh, definitely we can automate a lot of things uh, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, ensuring code quality but um, there are a few things which always has to be reviewed manually uh, uh, like mm -hmm. uh, design patterns or uh, mm. with, whether we are covering all the different scenarios within uh, within our uh, uh, application, or uh, if if uh, uh, there is a, a testing scenario, so that also we 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 can ensure that it it can be automated in order to reduce dependency on team members. So uh, there are multiple uh, uh, things which can be done in order to reduce the dependency on uh, team members in terms of uh, code review. Okay, thank you very much, Ashish. Okay, uh, I think um, that's it. We have like one minute left. Um, okay, um, thank you uh, everyone for joining the session and th thank you once again, Ashish, for your presentation. And everyone, um, I hope to see you back again tomorrow. And the session will start at uh, nine. Uh, you can join earlier uh, for the networking. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jason. Thank See you, you everyone, for Thank joining you. this session. Thank you, Ashish. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.